I want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is a story in the Old Testament of the Tower of Babel. It's a story in which God scattered and separated people and gave them multiple languages so that they could not communicate. This is the season of Pentecost. Pentecost is a story about how God restores and unites and brings together all the people of the world. In the city of Minneapolis and St. Paul, and here even in West St. Paul at this Target store that's closed, across the country, across the world, even in our local schools, we find that there is a division, a deep-seated division that is literally killing us and literally tearing us apart. It is racism. Racism has done this. We see the fruits of racism on the news every night. How do people of faith, how do people who believe in Jesus Christ confront and respond to racism? This is very personal to me. This is what my daughter wrote in on her Facebook. We have two of her children are children of color. And she wrote, I wrestle with telling my teenage brown boys things that are happening on the news. But who am I kidding? They know. We are numb to how black and brown humans are portrayed, talked about, joked about, and in all too often reality, we watch how another senseless death of a black human makes the news. In all honesty, I wasn't sure if I should share the story about what happened to George Floyd with Charlie. He already struggles enough, and what would this do to him? By the end of the day yesterday, I finally broke into tears and sat him down and told him what happened in our city, close to our house. I spared the horrific details, but watched his eyes look at mine with despair. I vowed to him that I will no longer challenge his feelings of fear of the police, feeling judged by his skin color, or try to reason my way out of his anxiety about what his life could look like because he has brown skin. What if I was running, Mom? I wouldn't call the police if I needed help. They might think I am the suspect. I can't blame him for thinking those things. I can't tell him this won't happen to him. I can't tell him he's being dramatic. How do you teach your child not every white person is a racist or not every police officer is dangerous? At 12, you can't. He is just feeling it. The ELCA Lutheran Church has come up with a statement that has says, as persons called to love one another as God has loved us, we therefore proclaim our commitment to speak with one voice against racism and white supremacy. We stand with those who are targets of racist ideologies and actions. We are called as a church, as a people of God, to respond to what's happening in our world of injustice. That is the sin that we must confront, not only in the world, but also in our hearts, our own hearts, and in our households. Please pray with me. Gracious God, you have brought a whole people out of slavery into freedom. Free us all from racism, violence, and indifference. Stir in us your spirit of gentleness and honesty. Free us so that we can examine ourselves openly to name and root out any thoughts that keep us from accepting any individual as one of your children. Forgive us for our judgmental attitude, which leads to classism and racism. Come, Holy Spirit, come and lead us to work for justice and for peace among all peoples. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen.